just a couple of months ago, Ziyun brought into the world some very unconventional and innovative lights with the G60 and the X100 Molus. So the lighting market is saturated with rebranded light from 100 different manufacturers, you know, so I definitely appreciate what they're doing here with this line of lights. Now, this right here is their newest 200 watt light that is part of the Molus family. Full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Zhiyun, but every sponsorship is a little different. Zhiyun, this is more of a showcase kind of video. They're not asking to review the video or they're not asking me to say only positive things. I get to speak my mind on it. And to me, that just goes to show that someone has confidence in their product. So the G200 is the smallest, most unconventional looking 200 watt COB light in the market and it's not even close. The smallest 200 watt LED that I own is the Aperture Amaranth and it's not even a COB light. The G200 compared to that is three times smaller than that unit, at least when it comes to the length. More traditional 200 watt COB lights are massive when compared to this little box. Now I'll tell you one thing for sure that this using this makes LEDs in the studio so much easier to use because you can move it around effortlessly and even boom it on a boom arm on a light stand without needing any kind of counterweight. Now from someone that again uses LEDs all the time in the studio, I can't overstate how beneficial it is working with lights of this form factor. All right, let's talk about some of its features. This 200 watt bicolor LED, it goes from 2700 to 60. 500 Kelvin. It can be controlled from a control box and a Bluetooth app, which is great if you plan on mounting it up really high up or in the corner somewhere. Now it also has a CRI rating of 95. And for anyone that doesn't know, like anything between 95 and 100 CRI is considered to be excellent when it comes to color accuracy. This light has a special feature. It's called max mode. And if you press on the two buttons on the control box, at the same time, you're gonna unlock about 100 watts of power, according to Zhiyun. So Zhiyun says when you unlock max mode, you get 300 watts of power. And you know, I had this running for a couple of hours without shutting off or anything like that. One thing I did notice that it does get really hot to the touch. And I did burn myself a couple of times when adjusting it and moving that light around. Now, when you are in this mode, the fans do get a little louder than usual. but respectively, at a good distance away, your mic is not gonna be picking the sound of the fan. One of the biggest highlights of this light is the form factor, all right? These have a built-in Bowens mount, so you don't need any other adapters when attaching modifiers like you would with the smaller lights that they released. There is a umbrella mount, which, you know, it might seem like something small, but you'd be surprised how many of my more expensive LEDs don't have a simple umbrella mount. Thank God. The control box has two knobs, one to control the power, one to control the temperature, and it has a on and off switch that you don't have to long press to turn on. Thank God. It's just a traditional on and off switch. Now, if you look at the back of the unit, you're gonna see this massive fan. And given how powerful this light is, I did expect it to be louder. It's very, it's very quiet when you're just operating it in normal mode. Now the mounting bracket on the bottom is built into the light so you can't take it off. And what I like is that even though these tightening knobs are kind of small, they're pretty sturdy. And if I were to put a heavy modifier on this sucker, it's not gonna creep or anything. So it's, 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 it's built pretty well. The control box that comes with this unit looks almost identical to the light. It's pretty lightweight and the cord running from the light to a unit itself to the control box is reasonably long so that even if you boom this light up really high up, um, you still can access the control box. So the usability of this light, what was it like using it? So one thing I really did like is that this light in the, well, in the control box, there are built in presets that allow you to make adjustments quicker. Like for example, if you have press or you just press in this knob, it's gonna increase the power by 20% every time. And every time you press it, 20%. Temperature as well. Every time you press it, the temperature is going to change. So that is great for uh, real world usage. I really like that. Quick, make some really quick adjustments. 
the output is powerful enough to overpower any of the ambient light that comes into my studio. And that is crucial for me. Now, even when pairing this light with my Westcott optical spot projector, the one that kind of creates those window effects, that kills so much of the light output. Um, I normally put a 600 watt light to the projector attachment uh, and we're using this in max mode. I got enough power out of this to get the job done. Now let's talk about the price. So the price of this light is $379, which in my opinion is very reasonable considering the small size, features, power output. Go to Adorama or b &H, Amazon. Look up 200 watt lights and you're gonna see what I mean. Now let's take a look at some things that could be improved. So one thing I could tell you right now is that it does get pretty hot when in max mode. And you know, that's neither here or there. It's a small unit, it's expected, I guess. Uh, and it also does support V-mount battery. So, you know, this is meant to be like a good on location light, very small, very portable. It doesn't have V-mount, doesn't have V-mount support, which a lot of people probably, you know, that will bother them. For me, it does not matter. I could care less. Uh, I just, I like to have my, my lights plugged into the wall. So, but those are the only two things that I can think about. At the end of the day, there's no light that is perfect and has everything. There's always some kind of sacrifice. Now, I think that this light gives you the closest thing to the best of both worlds when it comes to portability and power. I do think that it might become a permanent part of my home YouTube set here. I kind of like it with the, what is that? The fog, the smoke two filter. At the end of the day, every piece of equipment, there is gonna be some kind of drawback or kind of some kind of sacrifice when using it. And this, in my opinion, this is, it comes really close to just being the best of both worlds when it comes to power and portability. Yes, it doesn't have a V-mount support, but this is still a great option for filmmakers that are shooting on location and even for photographers that want to just see what you're gonna get, right? That Because LEDs, there is an advantage to using them in the studio because you can see the final outcome. You can see the light fall off. Unlike when you're using flash, you gotta make adjustments and take guesses every now and then. So again, uh, highly recommended for anyone out there looking for a light. It's built very well. It's powerful. It's quiet. I like it very much. No. I, I do. No. I do. No. I do. If you want to check out more info on this light, I'm going to leave a link down below in the description. And I will see you in a couple days probably because I have another video coming up soon.